guys, welcome back to my channel. It's me, Gary, from The Happiest Photography. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how I edit my nighttime photos. Sorry about the intro. Um, I originally filmed this earlier and it got cut off. So without further ado, I'll show you kind of how I edit like Fantasmic, nighttime parades, and also just situations that you can and can't save. Um, so first let's go into Fantasmic because this one's a little bit easier for me to do. Um, and let's see, I will use Master Labs presets again today, but I can also show you like a quick edit without. So let me do without really fast about what I would do locally. Um, so first make sure in the develop module, and also I didn't mention this yesterday, but make sure you're shooting in RAW. Uh, RAW files have a lot more leeway as far as like saving, um, saving like details in photos. So don't, if you do have JPEG, you can edit, but it's gonna be a lot harder, especially with night images. Night images specifically, raw is the way to go. Um, so Fantasmic settings, here's what I do. Around 1 320, 1 250th. I, I keep the shutter pretty low because it's dark. 1.8 ISR um, aperture. And then ISO, I either let it go into auto or I'll set it manually. I like less than 3200 when possible because it'll blow out the face really easily because it'll see all this black behind them and try to bring up the exposure too high, but then it will blow out the faces. So if I lose detail back here, it's okay, but I try to have some detail. So like, for example, like I usually just always expose her skin. So if I go into her skin, she's properly exposed here, but I would still want this a little brighter. Um, so let's go into, let's crop to like how I would do it for Instagram first. So I can see what I'm working with. Um, and also so the, the histogram's a little bit more accurate. Uh, I think that, let's see. There we go. So I think this is exactly the cropping that I had. So what I'd first do is I would bring highlights down just to where everything's kind of even here. I bring shadows up. Um, contrast, I add contrast to my photos. We could also bring it down um, probably up to like plus 40. I would bring all exposure up a little bit. Okay, so it's a little yellow, I think. So I would bring, maybe it's not. I'd probably bring that down to like 3200 and then the tint. Sometimes what I used to do is I'd actually just take a little dropper and drop it on his shirt, but I'd say about negative, negative 10. That's good. And right there is about a good even exposure. Okay, so what these over here do, so um, whites over here is gonna basically deal with everything that's on this side here. So we're gonna bring that up just about there. Hit the J key so you can see what's clipping, what's not. Blacks I usually bring up also. You could also bring them down if you want them really deep. Um, if I wasn't using a preset, I'd actually bring the blacks down like this. When it comes to like contrast and everything, maybe about medium contrast. And that's just gonna deal with the tone curve. And then I would bring down contrast here just a little bit more. So that's what I would do pretty much for the Rapunzel photo if I was hand editing it. I don't really adjust colors and such. If I did, I would bring like saturation down, maybe 10. Vibrance, negative five, about that. And now we can compare like before and after what that looks like. So I just like a little bit more contrast in the image because it's a little flat here. So that's kind of what I would do. So if I was using a preset, let's reset it and use the preset to show you how much easier that could be. Um, let's go into probably Fuji pushed. I would do all soft, maybe. Yeah, I would do all soft. Maybe just shadow soft. Crop this four five. And right there. That's what I would do for that one. <laughs> Pretty simple, right? Okay, so let's go into like parades. Um, let's go into this one. I like this one. Um, I probably would use a preset here. If I wasn't using a preset, like I said, I would do before. I would just look at the image as a whole, make sure that your profile corrections are on because that'll fix any distortion from your lenses. And also just, if you have chromatic aberration, it helps to correct that too. All right, so let's take down, I would bring down highlights until I could see details in the dress. Bring up shadows. Actually in this, I might leave the shadows. Yeah, bring them up a little bit. Whites, I would increase the whites because that brings out more enhancement here. Blacks. 
I think it really depends on what you want to do. If you want the sky to be really dark, you bring them down. Or if you want to lift shadows, I lift them up. I'm going to bring them down a little bit. Let's increase... Let's increase contrast a little bit and a little bit of exposure up, which would mean in turn bring the highlights down. Let's do that. Let's do a white balance adjustment. Bring down until our skin tone looks accurate. I like to add magenta to everything, so I'm going to say negative 5 here. Looks good. Um, saturation, you can be crazy and bring it up, but I bring it down. Let's go to negative 5, and then vibrance. Let's just leave it at 0. Um, say medium contrast on this looks good for the tone curve. And you can adjust those channels individually too if you want. Um, I don't. Let's see. Saturation. Let's bring the reds. Maybe we should bring the reds down a little bit. Oranges. That's going to deal with skin tones. Up six. Yellows. I would probably drop a little bit. Greens. I don't really see greens. Aqua. It's going to be inner dress a little bit, I think. If you're unsure about which colors this is affecting, just take this little dropper. It'll go over them. So that's going to be mainly in the blue aqua area. So if you want to increase saturation or decrease saturation of her dress here, you can. Let's bring it up a little bit. Purple. Let's not affect that. Magenta, that's going to be the dress for sure. Um, depends on what you want to do. I like to just leave that alone. Luminance, you might bring the magenta luminance down a little bit if you want more details there. Um, reds. Also in the dress a little bit, but I like I think those should go up. Oranges definitely should go up because that's skin tones. Yellows. Yellows are also part of skin tones, but not as much. And that's about what I would do there. <laughs> when it comes to noise reduction, because this is 3200 ISO, I'd probably bring that up to like maybe 10. I don't really like noise reduction in my photos, but if you really need it, you can boost that up pretty high, but just don't go crazy because it really smooths the way details. And so that's what I do without a preset. Without a preset takes a lot longer, but you can get a good result either way. So this is without a preset. Um, still looks good, but I think it looks better when you use presets. Um, without a preset, it's obviously a little bit more subtle. Uh, I can even bring exposure up a little bit. Yeah, I would do that. That looks pretty, right? So let's reset it. Let's show you mass and labs on that. Uh, I think for this photo I did Fuji original. No, I didn't. I did pushed. I always do pushed. And then I think what I did with the white balance is brought it down really cool. Perfect. Brought up exposure here. And then I think I did on I did highlight soft. All soft. Shadow hard. I think I did highlight soft here. And then I just kind of played around with this a little bit. Sometimes I'll bring down the contrast a little bit, but I think it looked fine the way it was. Um, bring up this closer to zero, the tint. The thing with night photos is that they use like a tungsten light on Main Street. So you just have to be careful how low you bring this but I think that looks good. So yeah, I like to go on a little bit more of the blue route here, you know, just what I like. Um, noise reduction, 10, and then crop. And I think this is what I did for my Instagram photo, like my Instagram. Um, I think I did two versions of this though at different points. One was like a hand edit, one wasn't. For nighttime photos, I really, depends on what I wanna do. I'll do hand edits on them um, sometimes, but then if I want them to look consistent, I'll do the preset. Then you just kind of play around with this, like to see what's best. I hear a car. Huh, this microphone gonna really pick up everything. And we're back. No more ambient noise. So, okay, so like I was saying, <laughs> oh, there should be so much cutting to do. Oh well, oh well, oh well, oh well. So that was Aurora. There's before, there's after. Before and after. So either way, they're not bad. Um, 
You can do the hand edits before. Let's go back and see if I can show that. Yep, right here. That was before. That was my hand edit. That's my preset edit. The preset edit's just a lot softer and closer to what I would do, like what I'd want it to be. Um, so that's why I use these. Let's go into, for example, something that's like a little bit more challenging. And that is like Main Street. Like when you have a performer like this, because that lighting is just not good. <laughs> so the thing I would probably do here is I would apply a preset. Um, then I would just kind of look around about what do I need to change. Like, let's bring exposure up. Uh, the problem is like, you don't want it to be too unnatural because it's supposed to be nighttime. Um, but you know. The thing is, when you try to make too many temperature adjustments here, their skin goes really gray. So you just want to be very subtle with the adjustments that you make. Yeah, no. <laughs> Some of these are just not savable, you know? I'd probably... Probably do that. Um, maybe even a different preset. <laughs> just go black and white. Um, let's see, if we do original... Kinda... Kinda better. All soft. And then deal with exposure. Yes. Yeah, Anyone else ever do that? Where you accidentally click with your font with your finger. <laughs> and I would do that. I I don't know. I bring it into like an unnatural route when it comes to brightness. Maybe because this was a four thousand ISO, uh, I would do like fifteen to twenty noise reduction, and then I think it would be fine. And then you can play around with the colors and stuff and try to save this image more, but. I don't waste that much time there. So this is the before, really dark. This is the after. Um, if you want it to be more in like a natural realm, you could do that. But I don't know if I would post that. I like it bright, right there. But see, that just looks weird. Too blue. It's like you got to play around with the white balance. That's what's hard about nighttime photos is white balance. So that's why you don't see so many of the nighttime photos. Easier nighttime ones would be like Tiana. Um, let's reset that. So she is a little bit easier to edit just because of the way it's lit. See, already it looks beautiful. There's some green here, so I would just bring this up. And yeah, I think that's all I did to that photo. And then I brought up noise reduction. So what I did is I applied preset, Fuji 400H plus one. I did all soft, brought up some noise reduction, cranked up that exposure. So dark, bring it up until it looks good. You can go there too. Um, I think in the originals of these, I use Portra also, just cause I wanted the greens to be more apparent like that. But I feel like that makes the skin look a little orange now that I go back and look at it, so I think Fuji does a better job. So yeah, Fuji does a way better job. Green, more pastel -y and nice. So yep, that's that's that. So that is what I would do with a preset. Uh, without a preset, really hard. But let's just do it. Crank up the exposure till she's bright. Bring down those highlights. Bring up some of the shadows. Add some contrast. Add some more contrast. <laughs> um, bring down the the white balance. Bring up the magenta. Right about there, and that's what I would do. Uh, I might play with saturation. Bring it down. Bring down clarity. There we go. It's very similar actually. So that's what I would do there. So just kind of play around on the basics. I wouldn't go too much in the HSL slider unless you really need to. Or if like something's just not working, like you need to bring up those greens, like they're too dark, you wanna brighten them. You can brighten those greens like that, that would look really pretty also. Um, but when you do this, it's really hard to get consistency. So that's why I like the presets, because they create consistency, or like I can go photo to photo to photo and not have to just sit there for like 20 minutes or photo. Um, Cause yeah, otherwise this tutorial will be like three hours long and no one's gonna watch it. But that's like, that's what I would do. So, um, it, whether you're for or against presets, you could still get a good edit. It just, you know, presets help with consistency. 
Like if I was to edit these two photos side by side, hand it, I don't know if I could get them similar. But with the preset, I can because I would just open up Fuji Pushed, apply Fuji Pushed, do some all soft, make sure my lens corrections are on, um, brighten to taste. There we go. Uh, cut some of the yellow. Maybe add a little magenta. Not that much. See, about maybe there, and then I could just match the edits and then bring up the noise reduction. Maybe 15, good sweet spot there. Yeah, looks pretty. This is the before, this is the after. Before, after. And this is like how I posted it. And if you want like more vignetting, you can just turn your lens corrections off and you get vignetting. Pretty easy. Um, that's okay. Phantasmic also, sometimes I'll, this is how you can tell if you've overexposed something. So let's turn on my lens corrections. If you bring this down all the way and you still see detail, that's overexposed. Okay, so you're not gonna get that information back. But just look how easy these presets make editing. Like I can do this so quickly. And that's it. <laughs> Maybe I'd bring down highlights a little. No, not too much though. And I think that I use the original on this one. No, but that looks good too. Fuji original. Oh shoot. This one you'd have to bring the exposure up quite a bit. Do highlight soft. I think the push still looks better. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's pretty much it. There's not much to really show. Like you just kind of treat it just like the daytime, but it's nighttime. <laughs> um, the thing is with night, you just have to be more subtle with your adjustments because if you go too strong, you're really gonna tell. And like it's it's kind of hard, you know, just getting that nice balance. But either way, these look good, you know. But this one was overexposed, so I have to deal with that. But sometimes overexposing for Phantasm is good because it's kind of easier to drop some of the highlights than it is to add them. So here's an example of like a good exposure for Phantasmic. To me, this looks beautiful. Um, if I go into skin tones just to check, I think she's exposed well. A little underexposed, but I mean, it's Phantasmic. It's in the dark. So reset. So for this photo... Fuji pushed, <laughs> as always. Would I go all hard or all soft? Let's break up the exposure. Highlight soft. I think I would just leave that alone. Bring the exposure up a little bit. Before and after. Um, I think with that one I might even do, yeah. The original Fuji. Warm it. Before, after. That looks much better. Just more contrasty. I like the edit version. JPEG is nice too, but see? Pretty simple. Uh, 2000 ISO, so you could choose. With my camera, you don't really have to do much noise reduction, but 10 would be good there. Crop it to four or five, or with this one, since it's longer, you can do a square. That's fine too. Let's do a square. I like to have more of the barge in there. Get some of the flower there too. These guys could be annoying, so you can kind of remove those if you want the healing brush. And let's see, get rid of it. <laughs> oh no, not that. There you go. That didn't work, why did it do that? Clone that. Got rid of the lights. So yeah, so if I showed you what that did, if you turn this off, you got lights and that. You can blend that better too. Add some more feather. There you go. You do that in Photoshop or with the app, like touch retouch, that's fine too, but 
the healing tool and the cloning tool here does help when you just want to remove something subtle. And also because this will be on Instagram size, no one would see like the messed up parts right here. So I don't even just I don't even waste that much time and just do that. And there you go. And then you can see before and after. So remove this thing, enhance the colors. Tell us all this time. So yeah, I think that'll be it. There's more photos I could show you here, but it's the same process each time. So um, yeah, if you have any questions or if you're having trouble with any of your edits, just let me know. And I can do more of the hand edit ones too. I just don't think they look as good because they're not as consistent like I was saying. So I highly recommend presets. My favorite are from Masson Labs um, just because they're an easy three-step edit and they also emulate true film. So for me is if I ever decide to shoot film, I'll have a way to match it. So if I shoot Fuji 400H, for example, I can match Fuji 400H. The thing about film too to keep in mind, especially with night photography, is that film doesn't work well at night. So these presets might not work as well at night either. However, I have found like a way that I like to use them and it still works for nighttime photos for me. I think Disney lights are their um, entertainment pretty well. So for me, it's a little easier, but um, yeah, if you're running into trouble with nighttime photography, you could try just, you know, editing differently, doing long exposures or like going the longer hand edit approach. But I take so many photos, like if you just look in here, um, right now I only have 12,000 something, but normally it's like in the 40,000 mark. So yeah, presets help me. Mass and Lab's good. I used to use Phil Chester presets. The thing about these ones is they're very muted. These are more of that moody style. I think they don't always work, but I use those for Paint the Night. That worked. Lady Burn is his girlfriend. Or fiance, I think now. The subtle ones I used to use a lot too, but see how muted that is? I prefer the punch. The punch of Fuji. That's why I like this so much. This is more this is like exactly the style I was trying to do. And I used to sit there and forever and try to tweak all these things and like the HSL sliders and all that stuff. And it's just a lot of work. And even here, these presets, some of them, uh, this one doesn't, but some of them affect like the color channels. And I'm like, I don't have the time. I don't got the time. Um, also down here too, you can affect colors. So you can change that back. Ooh, got that teal and orange look. That's too much, but so let's reset it. So yeah, um, let me know if you guys have any questions. Um, sorry this video was a little bit long-winded. Nighttime is a little bit flustering in my opinion. Um, because it's, you know, it's in, you don't really know what you're gonna get. That's why, like, <laughs> Electrical Parade really gave me stress. So, yeah, um, like and subscribe to this video if you found it helpful, and share it to your friends, and we'll be back next time with more, probably more daytime photos, because they're a little bit more, like, they have more dramatic before and afters, in my opinion, but, yeah, see you guys later. Thank you so much. Um, bye! We all believe in a world of dreams and imagination.